Hi there, it's Carrie Scroggins from KDS Insurance Services. It is Friday. I don't know about you guys, but I'm ready for the weekend. I've got lots of plans this weekend, lots of DIYs that I need to do this weekend to finish out my, do some trim work in my new office and um, get caught up. My um, family is, is gonna be working together on a project. So I kind of have the house free this weekend to get caught up and do things that I need to do. Uh, in the agency and in the house to get reorganized after my foot surgery. But today I wanted to start talking to you about some commercial insurance. Um, we've talked quite a bit about um, personal insurance and so I wanted to launch into this Friday and it is September the 17th. I hope you've had a really great week. I hope you have a phenomenal weekend and I hope next week's even better. But I wanted to talk to you a little bit about commercial insurance. Um, if you're a business owner like me, you know that a big expense that you have as a business owner is your insurance. And depending on your situation, um, would determine what type of insurance you, that you have. Most people have general liability insurance when they're a business owner, and that is a protection that protects you um, from somebody else suing you for a whole bunch of different things. Um, if you are a business owner that has a retail um, store, for example, you would need what's called a business owner's package policy. And that includes your general liability insurance. For example, if somebody came into your shop and they slipped and fell and were injured or something happened in your shop and they were injured, or you promised them something and it didn't, you didn't then follow up on it, um, that's the liability kind of portion of it. But it also, um, in a package policy, which is just like a package, um, you also have a lot of other coverages too. The biggest one being property. So if you own your building or if you rent a building, um, there's package, there's ancillary coverages that are built into these package policies that give you additional protection. So one of them would be uh, damage to property that you rent or property that you own. So if you're insuring a building, for example, um, that would be available to you in this package. Um, then there's all sorts of other different types of ancillary coverages. There's, in, there's some employee coverages if um, there's employee dishonesty and other coverages that protect you in the event that your employee does something wrong, makes an error, uh, forgets to tell somebody something. Um, those are all what we call a commercial package policy because you're getting the general liability, but then you're also getting these other ancillary coverages. And so um, th that's the two, the really big package that, that most people look for when they um, own a business. Because you do wanna be protected, obviously, if you're dealing with the public and you um, make promises and then you don't deliver on those promises, more than likely if there's money involved in it, if there's a financial transaction that takes place and you fail to meet those obligations, then guess what? You're probably gonna get sued. And so, it's important to have this coverage because if you are a business owner and um, depending on the classification of your business, whether you're a sole proprietor, whether you're an LLC or whether you're a corporation, all of those things are going to dictate how um, a lawsuit could potentially fall out. And if you're a sole business owner, for example, um, your personal assets, um, could be at risk. Um, that's why it's important that you have a commercial policy that protects you in the event that you, you know, do something wrong or fail to deliver on a promise or you provide a faulty product or whatever the situation may be and you're sued. You want, you want to have that line in the sand that protects your business entity from your personal entity. And so it is very important. General liability insurance is probably the biggest um, policy that is purchased on the commercial side of things. So what do you need to quote a commercial policy? Well, it's, um, it's similar to what we need on the personal side. We obviously, we need to know the, the business name. We need to have your business tax identification number, or FEIN number, your address, who your owners are, 
what type of business that you do, all facets of that. There's many businesses that do multiple things or offer, offer multiple services. And so when we quote a policy like this, it's very important that you provide a, an agent a full description of what you do. So for example, if you're a landscaper and in that process of landscaping, you do excavation or demolition or you plant plants or you put um, uh, sprinkler systems in, irrigation systems in, or if you do any other type of plumbing work. Those are all different categories. And so your insurance has to have all of those classifications in it for you to be, to be covered accurately. And in all of those classifications, also um, as an agent, what I need to know is I need to know what the payroll associated with each one of those activities is. So when I go to quote it, I get an accurate quote because what happens 99% of the time on commercial insurance is when an agent sells you a policy, you buy the policy and you pay for it or you set it up on monthly payment. And then guess what? Normally within about a month or so, you're gonna get a request from that carrier for an audit. And what that audit does then is that audit confirms what you've told your agent. So if you're giving your agent incorrect information on your revenue, because you, your agent's gonna to have to know what your revenue is when you're selling your, uh, when you're selling your products, um, the agent needs to know what your annual revenue is for each classification and then um, your agent will also need to know what your payroll associated with each one of those activities is because those are the two biggest rate affecting factors in commercial insurance. One is how much revenue do you make per function, per activity, and then how much payroll is associated with doing those functions. Um, and so we sell the insurance and then lo and behold, you get a phone call or you get a message that says, oh, by the way, here's an audit. Can you com please confirm the information that you told your agent at the time of the policy is accurate? Now, if for some reason, the information that you provided the agent doesn't match, then the, uh, the audit does entitle the commercial carrier to give you a premium adjustment. Um, that is a standard across the board, guys. If you are not truthful up front and the, your agent writes a policy based upon what you're telling him or her, and then the insurance company finds out that the numbers don't match, then they have the right to send you a bill, a premium adjustment. It's called an audit review. And then the additional premium is going to be your responsibility. So it is so vitally important that when you're talking to an agent that you have accurate numbers because the last thing that I would want to happen to you is that we quote you a premium for whatever, $800 a year, and then you go through an audit and boom, all of a sudden now you're looking at another $800 a year because we didn't have the correct um, annual revenue and we did not have the correct annual payroll associated with your particular business. So that's really, really important. I can't stress that enough is that when you're shopping insurance, make sure you have those right numbers because um, as an agent, the last thing that I would want to see is to be able to sell you a great policy, save you money, and then all of a sudden in six weeks, you call me up and go, Carrie, we just had an audit and now I owe more money. That That's not, that doesn't, that defeats everybody's purpose because the whole purpose of trying to shop insurance for you on uh, from my perspective as an independent agent is to find you the best packages at the best price uh in order to do that i have to have the accurate information because if i don't then i'm wasting my time and i'm wasting your time so just make a, a note to make sure that you're verifying that information when you are looking for commercial insurance um, another part of commercial insurance that most people are not aware of is um, insurance companies have what's called earned premium. And so when you buy every, every commercial policy is an annual policy um, with maybe the exception of a builder's risk. You can buy monthly, um, quarterly, semi-annually and annually on a builder's risk, which is obviously a builder's risk. You're building something. But um, Commercial policies are annual policies. And so when you write a policy, 
um, from a commercial carrier, or a lot of them have what's called earned premium. And what that means is when you buy a policy and you, um, it's a year policy, especially if you're paying this on a monthly basis, if you have a carrier that will offer that to you, or if you're paying it through a finance policy, um, what that means is they're going to guarantee that they get X amount of money from you. So if you buy it in February and then in June you decide, well, I don't need that policy, in your quote and in your policy it will spe specifically say there is an earned premium amount of this and what it's normally at least 25% of your annual premium. So even if you haven't paid that 25% of that annual premium and you cancel that policy or you, you um, cancel for non-pay, you are still going to be responsible for that earned premium. That's how commercial carriers guarantee that you just don't buy a policy in January and then turn around in March and cancel it because you needed it for some whatever reason. So, because it does guys, it does take a lot of time to research commercial insurance to get it quoted for you and then bind it and do all the paperwork. It is a very long, cumbersome process. I can tell you when I co quote a commercial account, I'm normally looking at to 20 to 25 carriers, depending on what type of business that you have. And that process to quote a commercial policy takes at least five to six hours um, because if I don't do my job and check as many carriers as possible to get you the best package that you're looking for, the best package at the best price, then I'm not doing my job. And my job is that, is to find you the best commercial package with the best coverages at the very best commercial price. And so a lot of people just don't understand the amount of time and effort that it takes to uh, quote commercial insurance and so uh, this is a lot of a lot of reasons why now agencies are starting to charge fees because there's a lot of time investment in it and um, I'm not so sure that the average com consumer truly understands the amount of time that it takes to quote a commercial policy and so the agent has to make sure that they're covering their expenses and their time uh, to quote it for you. It's sort of like, you know, the old term, you got to have skin in the game. Well, the same thing applies here. Um, you know, it's very frustrating to, to spend six or seven hours to quote a commercial policy. And then all of a sudden, five weeks later, you know, we get a cancellation for non-payment because, um, the premium hasn't been paid and so not only then does that hurt the agent because then the urgent the agent would have to return any commissions but you are still going to have to pay the guaranteed earned premium which is generally generally speaking 25 percent of your annual premium so food for thought there um just kind of remember that when you're going through this process um I like to talk about that up front to my commercial clients so they truly understand that, you know, we there are some things that you're going to be responsible for, um, audits, making sure you have the right in right payroll and the right revenue, and then of course making sure that you're paying your premiums. So commercial package policy, it generally includes commercial liability insurance that protects you in the event somebody sues you. Um, it does have a whole bunch of other ancillary products. I can't list them all because every carrier is different, but when you get a quote for a general liability or a commercial package policy, in that quote, it's gonna list all of those different things that are available to you uh, through that uh, package or that individual general liability policy. Um, I did want to also just briefly um, mention that in these packages, there is not uh, workers' compensation insurance. Uh, depending on your state, um, could determine whether or not it's required to have uh, workers' compensation. In the state of Texas, uh, you are not required as a business owner to carry workers' compensation. It is your choice as a business owner. Um, obviously, if you are in an industry where you have employees that are at risk, for injuries, um, I am always going to tell you, by all means, you need to have workers' compensation insurance. Because if you don't, then you're gonna be responsible for those those employees that are injured. So remember that, it, it's in the state of Texas, you are not required. But 
if you're not in the state of Texas, it's very important for you to understand whether or not your state mandates that uh, workers' compensation insurance is required. And the way to do that is to contact your local uh, Department of Insurance and they will have all, they should have all of the regulations required for your particular state. So um, workers' compensation insurance is very important. If you have a uh, you know, an office or a retail shop or something like that where there's not a whole lot of exposure, then it's your choice as the business owner as to whether or not you want to self-insure that or not. But here in Texas, it is not a mandate. You are not required to have workers' compensation and it is never included in a GL policy or a commercial package policy. So, so that's it for today. Um, again, it's Friday. I hope you have a great weekend. Um, Please take a few minutes to um, either send me a message. Please like and subscribe to my my video channel. Um, you know these these videos are for your purposes only. They're for for you to become more informed as a consumer. Um, it's a joy that I definitely um, love to do to be able to provide these messages to you, these videos to help you understand the complex world of insurance. It's not a boring um, industry because it's my passion and I love to do it. And it, it does have the ability to change your life, to protect all the assets that you're working very hard for every day, um, me included in that. And so to be able to just leave these messages out there for you to look at and uh, help you understand the complexities of the insurance industry, um, then great. And I hope you enjoy these videos. I do hope, as I said, you take a second or two to subscribe. My uh, YouTube channel is Carrie Devlin Scroggins. I do post n uh, numerous videos from that uh, YouTube channel because I have numerous things that I'm involved in. So, um, but please take a few minutes to like and subscribe, uh, leave me a comment and I will certainly get back to you. And as I said, you know, these videos are for your educational purposes only. I am not endorsing any coverages or carriers and I'm not confirming coverages. So, um, and I hope to hear from you. Like I said before, if there's a specific area that you need some help with, uh, please call me or shoot me a note. You can reach me on Facebook. You can reach me at my uh, website. You can always call me. The office numbers are 817-374-4477 or 832-391-8271. And uh, my email's around out in um, all of those areas, so you can all also shoot me a note. So happy Friday. I hope you have a great weekend. I hope you have a really safe weekend. Uh, wherever you are, I hope the weather is glorious, that you start to enjoy this wonderful fall that we're in. And uh, I pray that you stay safe and God bless the United States of America. God bless you. And I'll see you next week. Take care. Bye-bye.